Hello, everyone. Today's topic is make TIKV 10 times faster and edge typable. This topic is brought by Xiao Yu Ma and Li Chen Pei. We are from Pink App. So, why to make TIKV edge typable? Consider if you want to analyze online data in real time. Usually, we use different types of database for transactional processing and analytical processing workloads. Because these workloads are totally different. So for the database, the design goal is totally different. That means we use two different type of, a different type of the system, different type of database. And we need to move data from TP to AP constantly by ETL. The data movement itself is very expensive, slow, and hard to maintain. So usually people set Chrome tab job constantly, maybe like one hour or like a day. And the job is responsible for moving data between different systems. And this is not very simple. You need to constantly watch this uh, watch these job to preventing failures or you to check uh, data if it is consistent during the moving. And that becomes especially hard if the data volume is very big. So it's not a question, only a question of complexity. That also means when you get a report, that report m might be based on data from yesterday. You lost the data freshness. So that means if you want to read the fresh data or you want to eat the fresh fruit, the best way is to directly consume it from the source. So why system is separated? Why we cannot combine two systems into one? Then we can annihilate the moving data processing and directly read the data from the very beginning. So that's because of different database for different goals that use different design, especially the storage formats. So for a transactional processing system, we usually use a row format. So what is a row format? Row format means when you store a single each row, you store the columns side by side Consider this kind of query, select star from EMP where ID equals to 7658. For a row format system, you can directly seek to the start of the row and do a sequential read. Then you get all the row, all the row data from that row. So that means row format is very good for these kind of workloads. You read very few rows and you process them and store it back. So that's the typical pattern for a transactional processing system. Let's consider another example. Select average age from EMP. So that looks like a reporting query. You want to read, you want to analyze the average age for your employee. For that kind of query, the column format is more suitable than a row format. So what is a column format? A column format is a way to store your data that for each individual column, you store it tightly side by side instead of a, in a row bias. So that means when you re answer that query for average age, you just need to directly seek to the start of the age column and do a sequential read. Then you get all the data for age. Then you do an aggregation and answer the query. You don't need to touch any data from the columns that you don't need. Now you can see that's a very efficient way to read your data than the row format. But if you want to answer a query like a point query, 
like where ID equals to seven, six, five, eight, you just need to pick up a single row for a column format. You need to seek three times and to find each individual column uh, rows, uh, each individual column data for that sing uh, single row and to combine it together, then you can have the row. So that means the column format is not very suitable for the transaction processing. The other problem you need to consider is the workload interference. For a TP workloads, they might need to be very stable. Stable, low latency, and very high, very high transactional rates, rates. But for a reporting query, the QPS might be very low, but they consume a large amount of the compute resource. So that means if you process those two kinds of workloads in a single, single system, the reporting or the analytical workloads might largely interfere your transactional workloads. And the transactional workloads is very fragile. You don't want this to happen. So how to make Thai TV edge tappable? In a new version, uh, 4.0, we introduced a new component named Thai Flash into Thai TV system. So what is a Thai Flash? Thai Flash is a real-time updatable column storage engine. So the code base is partially based on ClickHouse. The ClickHouse is a very famous open source project. Uh, it's been built uh, from, from the Yandex. And we sync data as a learner role from TyKV via Raft. As some of you might know that we use Raft uh, as a consensus algorithm to replicate the data in TyKV system. So in TyKV, we have different replications for uh, each piece of data. And these replications are maintained by Raft. And some of the replication are leader replication and some are follower replication. And for tie flash replication, it's a learner role. That means the tie flash replication will not vote. And that we're preventing tie flash to interfere the stableness of type KV system. So the two story engine together make tie DB system a hash type database. And we can also access data via CBO. That means the TidyB optimizer is a cost-based optimizer and it can choose between a column formats or row formats from the, uh, based on the statistics information. It will choose a path that which can provide better performance or lower lower cost or lower uh, resource consumption. Thank you, Xiaoyu. Next, I'm going to talk about the architecture of TiDB. This is the architecture of TiDB, and we have TiDB as a computation layer and the TiKV as a storage layer. The data in TiKV are divided into regions and each region contains a contiguous key ranges. Each region has multiple replicas and they are keeping consistent with the raft replication protocol. What we add here is the lecture part, which is a type flash cluster. And there are multiple nodes inside type flash cluster. You can see that here we add a dashed line between the type flash nodes and type KV nodes, which means that the data replication in type KV will not be affected if one or more type flash nodes are done. Next, I'll talk about how we do real-time updatable columnar storage. We designed the columnar storage named the delta tree and the key idea is that we split the data by primary keys 
and into blocks. The design goal of the Delta tree is to avoid multi-way merge when we scan in batch. When new data arrives, the data is appended to the Delta space. To, to optimize for the read performance, the Delta space is sorted and indexed. Periodically, the dirt space is compacted into the stable states for better read performance. In this picture, we want to compare and show that why the dirt, 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 dirt tray can offer better read performance compared with the LSM trees. In the left hand side, when you want to return range from LSM tree, you need to read data from all the levels in the LSM tree and uh, do a multiple way merge. And this operation is really very heavy weight. And the read amplification is high. In Delta tree, you only need to merge data from the stable space and the dirt space. On top of that, we use a B plus tree to index the segment uh, information. In this case, if you want to return data for a certain reach, you only need to read data from a few segments. During the read, the dirt space and the stable space are merged. Compared with the LSM tree, this merge is a two-way merge, which has a lower overhead compared with the multi-way merge. Besides, the stable state is stored in column flight, which offers much better read performance during scans. Next, I'm going to talk about how do we achieve the raft-based H-type. We introduce a learner role to the Raft protocol. All the type flash nodes are learner roles. By learner roles, we mean that those nodes will not participate in the Raft leader action, No, they become part of the quorum during the data write. As a result, the writes in TechAV does not need to wait for type flash. And TechAV works normally even if type flash nodes die. The replication between TechAV nodes and type flash nodes are direct replication, and there's no intermediate channel between them. This replication is very efficient, and usually the latency between the is in milliseconds. We also also rely on the automatic load balance and fault tolerance features built in TiDB to make the data replication highly available. This is also an illustration of what I just talked about in the last slides. And compared to the, the replication in TiKV and TiFlash with the ETL, this is, this is very efficient. Usually during ETL, we need to copy the data to a staging area and then copy the data to the data warehouse, which causes a lot of data to be copied. Another thing people usually ask is how do we achieve consistent read? Because replication from TechAV to TechFlash is asynchronous, we need to guarantee the consistency during the read time. How do we achieve this? The idea is pretty simple. And we use a learner read algorithm and consult the leader on the replication progress before we return the data to the client. And this actually guarantees we can uh, achieve a strongly consistent read. For example, consider the case that at time t0, there is a write to the 
take a node. And uh, later at time t1, this is read to the type flush node. How do we keep, how do we make sure that the data read at t1 is uh, strongly consistent and it can return the data written at t0? During this read, the learner will first talk to the leader and ask the progress of the replication in the leader. And in this case, it knows that the leader is ready at index four. Before the learner returns to the client, it needs to wait until it replicates to uh, index four, and then it returns data to the client. This combined with the timestamp and the MVCC, we can actually achieve snapshot isolation in TypeFlash as well. Next, I'm going to talk about the performance. Here is an example of the benchmark result on the on-time data. So on-time data is a data collected since the 1980s about the airplanes. It considers, it, it contains the data of the flight number and the start time and the landing time. You can see from the result that the TIDB plus TIFLASH uh, offers a very good performance compared with uh, other solutions. Some of them are built for analytics and big data processing. These queries are multi-dimensional analytic queries, whereas TIDB and TIFLASH is good fit. If you want to know more about the queries look like, you can look at read about the blog. Here is an example of the performance imp improvement we see from an early adopter of TypeFlash. It's an internet company called Xiaohongshu. It is a TiDB user, and they have TiDB running production. They selected like uh, around 400 queries from their production system and migrated them to TypeFlash. From this graph, we can see there's uh, three to 10 times speed up. And we can see that for some long running queries, the speed up can be up to 20 times. Also, I want to call out that this result is based on an older version of TypeFlash. And since then, we made a lot of progresses and improvements on TypeFlash. And you can, we can expect much better performance with the newer version of TypeFlash. Thank you.